Senior Communications Officer of PETA in France, and she joins me live now from London. Thanks so much for speaking to us, Anissa. It's incredible to see that, that poor polar bear there with um, graffiti on it. Um, tell us, how dangerous is this for the animal now? Well, as you've said, experts have warned that this animal is now going to struggle to, uh, to hide and to camouflage in order to hunt, which puts uh, his survival at risk. Uh, we know that already uh, his species is struggling to survive in, in the Arctic. Uh, with, there's so many reports of polar bears roaming into cities, hungry, exhausted, hundreds of miles from their natural habitats looking for food. And this is an extra struggle, an extra danger for this animal in particular. Uh, on, and on top of that, this kind of shows an absolute disrespect. We don't know why this was done. This might have just been a joke or a prank. But it, it shows, uh, once again, this pervasive use of animals uh, and, and a, a lack of respect for them to, to write on, on one of these animals. And another example that shows a lack of respect for animals is the uh, Gahimai festival taking place in Nepal right now. Can this festival be prevented? Because it's incredible, as you know, more than 2,000 buffalo, they wait for their death um, in the size of what is roughly a football field size. Um, and it's called the bloodiest festival in the world. What can be done to stop this, Anissa? Yes, it's a definite lack of respect. I think more than that, it's an absolute bloodbath. Um, images from the festival just show these, uh, these buffaloes who are waiting for their death. They're being dragged. Some of them are too exhausted to stand up. There's babies watching their, their mothers being beheaded and they cry out. Uh, it's absolutely unbelievable that this is allowed to happen uh, today. The Nepali authorities had promised uh, to uh, ban the, these practices. They were meant to uh, protect these animals and spare their lives, but they've uh, they've broken these promises and they've failed to protect these lives. Uh, with over 2,000 animals who were killed in this horribly cruel way, the authorities have faced, Nepal has faced uh, international criticism and, and condemnation, uh, and we call on, on the authorities to uh, make good on their promises and to put an end to this so that this never happens again. And that brings me on to the question of bullfighting. Um, this is an important cultural tradition um, in, in many countries, such as Spain. Do you think that will ever end? Of course, we're, we're already seeing a decline of the bullfighting uh, industry, it's it's only propped up by subsidies and the mistaken belief that this is a tradition. It, it's not a tradition, it's torture. Any images of bullfighting see that these sentient animals are chased around, they're stabbed, they're bled to death, they're exhausted, uh, they're deliberately weakened and they, they're just absolutely taunted uh, and it's a fight that they absolutely cannot win. Uh, it's not a sport, and I think a lot of people today are seeing this. We have an overwhelming majority of people in Spain who are opposed to bullfighting. Uh, there have been marches in Madrid and other countries showing the complete opposition of the Spanish public to uh, this, this industry, these practices. In other countries, such as France, we still have a, uh, a tradition of bullfighting in the south of France in certain cities, and there too there's an overwhelming majority of people who are against it. Most younger generations will never attend a bullfight. So I think it's definitely something that's on the way out. It might be something that we see uh, on our, in our lifetime disappear. In the meantime, we, we really do urge tourists to never uh, take part in a, a bullfight or never attend a bullfight, never attend any other event surrounding a bullfight. For instance, the, uh, the bull racing, which happens in Pamplona and other cities, uh, it's propped up by the tourist, tourism industry Anissa, and by tourists who have to go there. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Anissa Portois, thank you for your thoughts.